Hi Booktube, it's Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to tell you about the books that I read in the month of July. Now, July was a little bit different because, as I've mentioned in previous videos, we travelled for the first three weeks. We travelled back to the UK after a three-year absence due to travel restrictions here in Singapore and we wouldn't necessarily have been allowed back into the country. So this was a very special trip and we headed first of all to the east of England and where most of our family and very close friends are based. We had a couple of weeks there before we then travelled right over to the other side of the UK to Wales and to the city of Cardiff which is where my daughter has just graduated from university so we had a very special day um, at her graduation. I will put a picture up um, above here or here of a very very special day um, for Ellie and ourselves and then we headed up to Manchester. We headed up to the north of England and spent a few days there, never been to Manchester. I was very excited one day when I saw a sign saying Elizabeth Gaskell's house but unfortunately we didn't have time for me to explore it further and I must go back another time. And then we had a right back down to Cardiff again to spend the last few days with Ellie before saying goodbye to her. She's about to start a new job at the beginning of September. Now my plan had been to vlog through my holiday, but it didn't really quite go to plan. So firstly, myself, my husband and one of my sons got COVID during this trip. So we didn't really feel like being on video. Secondly, the cottage where we were hiring had a lovely little garden. I thought, oh, maybe I'll be able to do some um, video out there. But then it turned out I had quite a busy road, the other side of the wall in the garden. And so you just, every, you know, few seconds were getting like vroom, vroom, vroom past. So I was like, ah, oh, this is not really conducive to filming either. And I have to say, I found myself feeling quite self-conscious vlogging. I didn't mind taking photos out and about, but I did feel quite self-conscious. And yeah, and then also when we were in the East, it was really, really hot weather. But as we went after the graduation day in Cardiff, the weather there actually was really poor when we returned to sightsee. So raining, very dark clouds, so it wouldn't have been great for vlogging. And also in Manchester, most of the time it was gray and raining, unfortunately. So as I say, neither great. However, at the end of this video, I have put in a few little minutes of some of the videoing that I did in the areas that we were situated in. So if any of you are interested, you can go, um, you can see that at the very end. But let's talk about the reading. That's what we're here for. And I had set myself no TBR for this month because I knew that the priority would be spending time with family and friends. I wanted no pressure at all, no set TBR, which is very unlike me. However, I did want to participate in July, Jane Austen July, the readathon which many, many booktubers um, participate in every year. So the first thing I read, or I should say reread, for this readathon was My Beloved Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I, of course, gave this five stars. This is my all time favourite book. I absolutely adore this book in so many different ways. Haven't got time here to explain why, but I love the love story, the romance, and it, the whole experience was heightened, enhanced by being in the English countryside while reading this, which is fantastic. I actually listened to this and it's the first time I've um, ever listened to it and it was the narration by Rosamond Pike and I thought she did a great job. I would just say I didn't like her voice for Mrs. Bennet. We all know that Mrs. Bennet is very irritating, but she just, the voice that she did for her was a little bit peculiar, I have to say, but otherwise, I would say great job, really, really worth listening to that narration. And it was really comforting to, to listen to that story that I know so, so well. So yeah, fantastic, fantastic read. The second one I read for Jane Austen July was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen herself. And this was a reread for me and I gave it four stars. This is about Catherine, who's, it's a very sort of coming of age novel. She's very young, she's very naive and, she is invited by some family friends to Bath and the whole society there opens up a whole new world for her. She meets some really interesting characters. She learns that she has been quite naive and that people can use her and, um, and manipulate her. And she also begins to attract male attention. 
she also is a lover of reading and gothic literature in particular and I love the way that her imagination just runs wild and she starts to have all these pictures of attacks and threats and you know she I, I really really like um that side of her I think the romance it would never be a five stars for me the romance is a little bit weak I would say um, compared to something like Pride and Prejudice but yeah I really I really enjoyed this. Now on to adaptations that I watched. I only managed two in in the month in this busy month and the first one was to re-watch Emma the 2020 the newest version um, and I watched this on the plane on the way back from England to Singapore and I really enjoyed it um, the second time I enjoyed it in the cinema the first time round but I think I um, I think I got more of a humor this time I think when you watch it the first time you miss quite a lot that they've put in although I have to say that nosebleed scene I find so over the top it really it really irritates me a little bit that one but I think the main actress what's her name um Anya Taylor-Joy I think she's excellent I think that casting was superb and there's a really 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 great um cast in this and I love Bill Nye as the father as well I think he's he gets it spot on Johnny Flynn as Mr Knightley I have to say I think Johnny Flynn is a great actor and it wasn't necessarily his acting, but it was the look they gave him with this sort of blonde curly hair over his face. There was something that just sort of jarred with me a little bit of the way that he looked. I don't know, I don't know why. And um, so yeah, I didn't, it doesn't completely sit really well with me, but I thought um, Josh O'Connor as the vicar was spot on. I thought he was really, really good. So yeah, really enjoyed watching that one again. And then when I got back to Singapore, I have got this Jane Austen collection and I rewatched Northanger Abbey with a very young Felicity Jones. And it's a really good adaptation of it, particularly when she does the, the Gothic images. So yeah, I really um, enjoyed that one. Now onto some other non Jane Austen July reads. And the first one is this one, Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. And I actually gave this five stars. This is about Marjorie, who is in a dead end teaching job in 1950. And she has heard about the golden beetle. And this is supposedly to be found in New Caledonia, an island off Australia. And she is going to throw in her dead end job and head over to this island to discover this beetle. But she needs an assistant. So she advertises for an assistant and she interviews three different people. Well, in the end, it's Enid Pretty who ends up being her assistant. This is a most unlikely, unlikely friendship that begins to develop. Enid is completely what Marjorie is not. She is, she's not very educated. She's quite brash. She's very sort of alluring to, to men. And, and she's not the ideal assistant that, um, that Marjorie would have really wanted. But they set off on this adventure. It's a perilous trip. They, there is a lot of risk involved. They are several times in danger. They break rules. But through this all, you have this wonderful friendship, unlikely friendship that develops. Um, what also happens is you keep flicking back to the backstories of both Marjorie and Enid and I don't know it just made me think that when you meet somebody you really you know you see you get an initial impression by the first conversations you have but there everyone's got a backstory right and there's these two women have got an incredibly interesting fascinating backstory and they've been brought together in unlikely circumstances and bit by bit they sort of divulge this past to each other and this past has contributed to who they are today. There is also a stalker who is a guy who's suffering, He just, it's not overtly said but it sounds like PTSD and he becomes a threat to them as well but I thought it was delightful. I, it, some might say it's a little bit slow in places. I think because I was in holiday, I'm not in school teaching time, I had the time to really savour it. And I thought the writing by Rachel Joyce was great. I will definitely be reading more of her work. It's the first one um, I've tried. And just the, just the way that she 
described nature and she peeled off the layers of these two women I thought was wonderful and I found myself per, um, turning the pages wanting to know more and more about how this was going to develop and loved finding out more of their of their backstory so yeah I would I would recommend this one very different but very wholesome a very um very a joy to read in actual fact now the next one I'm going to talk about is The Seven Sisters by Lucinda Riley. Now this is a book that I've been meaning to get to for ages and a lot of people have talked about this one. This is the first in a series called The Seven Sisters and there are seven in this series. The reason there are seven is because it is centred around six sisters and I believe the seventh one is called The Missing Sister. So presumably we're going to get another part of the story later on. Now this has been quite a popular series. It's very quick, very accessible, um, but it centers around these six sisters who are all adopted. And at the beginning of this one, their father, who was instrumental in adopting all these different sisters with all the different backgrounds, he has passed away. So they, all the sisters are brought back to the family home um, on the shores of Lake Geneva. And with each of the books, each of the sisters are going to be given clues to finding out all about their heritage. So this first book uh, focuses on Maya and this will take her on a journey back to Brazil. And this is where, this is contemporary to begin with. And then we go her backstory. She starts to piece together her history, her ancestors, and it takes us back to 1920s in Brazil. And one of her ancestors, Isabella. And Isabella, is destined to marry into aristocracy. Her father is very much on a path and on a, very, on a mission for that to happen. But she has a trip, a summer trip to Paris and has a, an encounter with a young sculptor, young French sculptor, which will change her path, shall we say, and her feelings. So yeah, it, what I really liked in this book was the fact that we get some of the backstory, the history behind the, of course, incredibly famous statue to Christ the Redeemer. So we get, we we meet the, the guy who was behind the plans for this and how they were going to engineer this amazing sculpt, um, sculpture and how it was going to be, you know, how it was going to be built and put together and the practicalities and who was involved. So I really like that part um, within this, this story. So then we get this real sort of sweeping love story. Um, so Maya puts her history together and of course she has her own sort of romantic encounter as well along the way. So yeah, again, it was a holiday read. I gave it four stars. I think maybe if it was another time I might have given it three, three and a half, but, and it's a little bit too long, I have to say, and I think all the other ones are quite, quite chunky. I will continue with the series. I'm not like an imbur any burning desire to carry on with the series, but if you want something that's really quick and got that historical element, element to it, and obviously follows these characters, and from what I understand, the sisters' stories go to different countries as well. So that sounds really appealing. I think we're going to North Europe on the next one. So at some point, I will pick up the series again. But yeah, a light, um, fun read. Now, the next read was My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell. And this I've mentioned several times on my channel. And again, I gave this five stars. This, however, was the first time I had listened to this. And I really enjoyed that experience as well. The narrator was really, really good. Now, this is a memoir um, written by Gerald Durrell, who, with his three siblings and his mother, lived for a period of time on the island of Corfu. He is a budding um, botanist and um, zoologist. And in this memoir, you have wonderful descriptions of nature, the island life, the family's antics, the creatures that he loves to collect. And again, I laughed out loud in it. And the writing, I just, it is just delightful. And if you want to be transported to the island of Corfu, this is a great, great book. So I would thoroughly recommend this one. And the audiobook was um, very, very good, very entertaining as well. Now, the last book I'm going to talk about today is Something Might Happen by Julie Myerson. 
I read the physical format of this book, but I've left it um, in the cottage for somebody else to read in, um, in England. And I took this one with me because it is set in a small seaside town in Suffolk, which is the area that I was actually staying in. Now, I thought this was mistakenly a murder mystery. There is a murder of a woman at the very begin, beginning of the book, and but it is not a murder mystery because we centre on... Well, first of all, we, we look at how this murder has affected this very small, sort of close-knit community. And, but then we are really centred on Tess, who was the friend of the murdered woman. And, um, and we're looking at her grief and we're looking at how she's been impacted. And but we also then find out about her own marriage, her own family. And unfortunately, we go down the path of affairs and a connection with this past woman and as the police investigation runs she even sort of mixes with one of the policemen as well and yeah the only thing I liked about this book basically was the fact that the places being mentioned were literally 10 minutes down the road and I could picture them and the types of beaches the pebble beaches the shingle and these places that was great but apart from that didn't like the writing, I thought it was nothing special and yeah, the story was irritating me and I really was rushing through it to try and finish it. So yeah, unfortunately I did finish it but it was two stars for this one. So yeah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. You, If you want to see a little bit of the vlogging, please carry on for the last couple of minutes. If not, please let me know what was the best book that you read in July? Was it a Jane Austen book or was it something completely different? Thank you very much for watching. I will come to you with another video very soon. Take care. Bye. Hi Booktube, it's Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm in a different location today. I finally made it to England. And I'm here in the lovely river town of Woodbridge. another centre back. Oh. Love it. Time to upgrade. Here we go. Here we go. Go on, Abenj.